Is there such a thing as a piano hand? Do your hands need to be a certain size or shape for them to be suitable for piano playing? Let's start with the question of whether you need big hands to play the piano. It's true that there are certain pieces that seem to require very large hands, but such pieces are really the exception rather than the rule. In general, if your hands can stretch an octave, you can play most piano music. I've heard students with tiny hands who could play Liszt Rhapsodies and Prokofiev Sonatas brilliantly. Singers choose repertoire for their voice type. There are the standard vocal ranges, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. We see these four voice types in most sacred music, such as box chorales. There are also in-between classifications, such as mezzo-soprano, contralto, baritone, and bass baritone. Singers of each type choose repertoire within their foc or category. Singers do sometimes move to a different foc, such as a soubrette moving to lyric coloratura roles, or even changing voice types altogether, such as a soprano moving to mezzo-soprano. Pianists can model singers and choose repertoire that best suits their hands. There's no need to struggle through a piece that was clearly written with larger hands in mind, especially when there's so much great music to, to choose from that will fit smaller hands. Even very large hands are by no means always a blessing. I know a pianist who can finger chromatic octaves with five one on white keys and astonishingly four two on black keys. Now, my large but hardly gigantic hands can stretch a fifth using fingers four and two, which is quite normal. This pianist told me that while open hand positions are comfortable for him, he can have trouble with closed hand positions that require the fingers to be within a small space. It's worth noting that piano keyboards used to be smaller. The keys on so-called forte pianos, the early pianos that Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven played, were slightly narrower. Moreover, the keys were much lighter to play and could only be pressed about half as far as today's grand pianos. This certainly affects pianists when we play music written for these older pianos on modern instruments with their much heavier keys that we also need to press further down. Beethoven wrote a pianistically novel passage in his second published piano sonata. The opening movement of the sonata in A major, opus two, number two, has this passage. This is a rare example of Beethoven specifying fingering. However, even pianists with large hands are unable to play this passage using Beethoven's fingering on a modern piano. The keys on today's pianos are simply too wide for this fingering to make any sense. Instead, the best solution in this case is to split the passage between the hands. More important than the mere length of the fingers is opening the hand. Some hands are smaller, but they can stretch more. I've encountered pianists with smaller hands than mine whose hand span was nonetheless just as wide as mine. I can comfortably reach a tenth, and I can reach an eleventh if I really stretch the hand. Every once in a while you'll encounter a passage that just doesn't fit the hand. It might be just that one chord in the piece that you can otherwise play perfectly well. Usually it's just a single note in the chord. In such cases, we should use our musical judgment. Rather than disrupt the musical flow by slavishly trying to obey the composer's orders, it's at least worth seeing whether we can find a more musical solution to that spot. An example is in Beethoven's Hammerklavier Sonata. The opening page of the sonata contains a chord that requires stretching the right hand from B flat to C an octave above while the index finger plays D. This is hardly a great difficulty that only real virtuosos can surmount. It's simply awkwardly written for the hand, especially given the slightly broader keys on a modern piano compared to Beethoven's piano of 1817. Some pianists arpeggiate this chord but it sounds awkward and disrupts the musical flow in my opinion. I believe it's better just to omit one of the lower notes. I leave out the low B flat and no one has ever noticed.
One thing we do need to be able to do is play between the black keys. Some piano keyboards have slightly thinner black keys. Even the width of the black keys is not constant on the modern piano. It's worth keeping this fact in mind in case you encounter a piano with thicker or thinner black keys than you're used to. Let's talk about the qualities we should develop in our hands for piano playing. The first is flexibility. The hands should be flexible but not hypermobile. In other words, you shouldn't be double jointed, if possible. The fingers should always be curved and they should never bend backwards at the joints. So it should never go the reverse direction. The second quality is dexterity. We need to be able to get around the keyboard. The more we can do so with as little effort as possible, the broader will be the range of repertoire that we can play. Now moving from one hand position to another is the work of the arms, particularly when hand positions are not adjacent to one another. Playing within a given hand position requires dexterity from the fingers. This can be improved through careful exercises, including scales, arpeggios, and sometimes double notes. The next quality we need is releasing the fingers. The ability to release the fingers is one of the most important aspects of a real piano hand. For expressive playing, we need two things. First is fast release. Being able to release the fingers quickly is important in fast passages. This is what allows us to play articulately, to say what we have to say clearly. If we jumbled or mumbled speech, it would be difficult to understand what we're trying to say. And it's the same in music. Like articulating syllables, words and phrases in speech, the way we articulate notes in music needs to be appropriate to what we wish to say for it to sound natural. If we overly articulate speech, it sounds highly unnatural. The next quality is slow release. A slow or controlled release of the keys is likewise important for expressive playing. One of the variables to a pianist's touch is the speed of release. I recommend experimenting with releasing the keys at varying slow speeds to develop further control over the keyboard. The next quality we need is strength and endurance. The muscles of our hands do need a certain amount of strength to play the piano. Now, part of muscular development is endurance. It takes physical as well as mental endurance to practice for several hours every day. Practicing scales while varying articulation, dynamics, and tempo is a good way to develop both strength and endurance of the hands. Ultimately, like singers, we can only really work with what we've been given. While some pianists may seem to have natural piano hands, even concert pianist hands come in many different shapes and sizes. Our hands are malleable to a surprising degree. While adults can't magically grow longer fingers, we can increase their dexterity, strength, and even flexibility.